So this is my first time doing a national seminar. So I'm going to rely quite a bit on my coordinator. But it's also, it's also an extremely broad topic. So what we focus on will be driven by your interests. So for example, we shall definitely start with trying to understand a bit about our closest star and life giver, but how does it, how big is it? How old is it? How do we know how old is it? Uh, what will it do say a billion years from now? Uh, that actually, those are somewhat easy things to understand. What's far more difficult is how the sun changes over say 10 years. And those changes affect life on Earth, uh, technology actually. And uh, this is basically done, uh, the effects are because of different types of emissions from the sun. And we've had instances where emissions from the sun have caused power outages. But the problem comes because we need to understand how these emissions occur, what they do to uh, do to technology. The other direction one can go is towards, instead of making this a sort of astronomy, solar physics based seminar, um, we also take a short detour and look at how the sun affects weather and climate, if there's any interest in that, because the sun after all drives the climate. Whether it affects weather, Yes, definitely. So how does it do that? Does it affect, does the sun play any role in global warming, for example? But the sun is, the star is our host star and we are not alone around the star. Uh, we have siblings, planetary siblings, there's the solar system. So we can learn about the solar system, what type of different, the different types of planets and whether, what type of planets do we see around other stars that are like the sun or other stars that are not like the sun? And how would we even see them? And how do we go about exploring them? And if you're really interested in more of the mythology side, there's a huge body of literature on the different uh, solar mythologies, starting from say, I'm from India, where the sun is the sun god rides a chariot, very similar to the ancient Greeks and Romans and causes night and day. But that's a complete, that's a very different direction of study. So which, how deep we go into any of the topics will really depend on, as I said, the interest of the participants. We can go infinitely deep into any of these topics, but what we'll do is we'll decide early during the seminar, what should we cover more? Though we should learn a bit about all of these things. Now, just a fun fact, the US Postal Service is soon going to release a set of stamps about the sun. This, these are images of the sun in different wavelengths. So it's not what our eye can see, except the one here where you see the sunspots. And it actually shows how much more interesting the sun is than just, you know, a ball of gas. So you have these different things, like you have a solar flare here. Now this is a coronal loop. Uh, there should be a solar flare. Yeah, that's a solar flare. That actually happened. This particular image was taken in 2003. We were fortunate that the magnetic fields of this flare didn't quite affect the Earth's magnetic field. So, and magnetic field too much, I should say. And we had early warning of the particles reaching us thanks to a satellite called SOHO, which is sitting at about, it's three times as far away as the moon is. So it's never eclipsed. So that gave us an early warning that we're going to have this gigantic the effect of these gigantic flare. And many communication satellites were switch, switched off safely. Only one Japanese television satellite, I believe, was fried. 
but that's what happens with these uh, emissions if you're not careful. Uh, we don't completely understand things like coronal holes and stuff. So we know a lot about the sun, but not enough. Now, as to what grade levels, actually any grade level, the last time when I led a seminar at the, at the New Haven level, uh, one of my participants was a third grade teacher, another was a high school science teacher. And it all depends on the, on the depth that you want to go to, what type of activities. So this is actually very flexible in that sense. The level of detail can be changed. And you can not just teach about the sun and what the sun is, or what in my jargon, I would call the phenomenology of the sun, but you can study physics using the sun and the solar system, astronomy, of course, but you could also do mathematics because the various physical laws that govern the solar system lend to very nice word problems. So if we, we know, for example, that how long a planet takes to go around the sun is related to how far it, how far it is from the sun. It's uh, one of the laws uh, first formulated by Johannes Kepler. So we could, we could have word problems about that. So you could study algebra, basically. Uh, you could, it, it's a good place to, if you're doing uh, advanced geometry, things like conic sections. Uh, you could do calculus, though that might be a, a bit too much of an advanced level. Algebra, trigonometry, those things are very easy. You can have tons, you could use the concepts of solar physics and the solar system particularly and uh, formulate very nice problems, which I think would be more interesting than just giving people a formula to solve. In fact, the word problems are what we normally do in science. So I'm looking forward to uh, working with you and what what subtopics we covered, I'll be govern, I'll be sort of, uh, I'll use your input to go into those topics.